It's time to welcome the Wine Ladies with Georgia and Suzanne. An entertaining hour topped up with great ideas about wine, where to dine, anything and everything to do with the vine. Great conversation, lots of laughter, guests from all walks of life, food and wine, music, art, sports, and much more, all on The Wine Ladies. Hi, everybody. It's us, The Wine Ladies. I'm Georgia. And I'm Suzanne. And welcome to The Wine Ladies, one sip at a time. We're live here today in studio. And of course, our friends and fans on Facebook, Twitter, thewineladies.com. Thanks, as always, for sending in all your questions and your comments. And also, I would like to say this would be a great time to remind everybody that we have a contest going on right now. If you don't already like us on our Wine Ladies Facebook fan page, now would be a great time to do that because we are giving away a prize, a $25 gift certificate to the Wine Ladies Accessory Store just for liking us. As easy as that. And we've got some fantastic items in our store. We've got some Brick's chocolate. We've got ice bags that, um, that, that are like wine coolers. We've got a whole array of things. We're going to be picking the winner on November the 20th, uh, 2011. So make sure you like us on our Facebook fan page. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. So we've got a great show planned for everybody here today. We're going to be uh, talking about a winery that is over 120 years old and is legendary mm. for more than one reason. Now, you know the, the old saying, uh, the devil is in the details? <laughs> well, in this specific <laughs> case, say. the devil resides elsewhere. Oh, that really does sound intriguing. <laughs> All right, like as we always like to do, we like to toast our guest in studio and of course toast the Wine Lady Show. So here we have our oversized glasses. Cheers everybody to a fantastic show. <laughs> Cheers everyone. And in our glasses we have a delightful 2010 Sauvignon Blanc. It is from Chile and we're going to learn a lot more about this wine and many others a little later in the show. All right, so on to our guest this afternoon. He has been described as a winemaker genius, as well as being one of the most likable winemakers in the industry. We've already spoken with him, and I have to agree. And uh, he has crafted wines that have become Chile's first global wine, uh, with sales topping over 2 million cases. Let's welcome to the show Marcello Papa, winemaker for Concha y Atora. Oh, I can never say it. <laughs> Casilero del Diablo. Good. That, that oh, was okay? Good. Right. Uh, I, I think maybe I get a 4 out of 10 on that one. But <laughs> Welcome, right. Marcelo. Thank you. Hi, Georgia. Hi, Suzanne. And you're uh, just here from Chile. You just arrived from Toronto I for just six arrived. hours you've been here. Yes. I just arrived to Toronto, and uh, I enjoyed this beautiful day. And, and your you must company, have brought of the course. sunshine with you. Of course, of course. <laughs> we thank you for that. Yeah, Thanks. absolutely. You're and you welcome. just ran a half marathon yesterday. You, you ran yeah. a half marathon, you hopped on the plane, and you, you came over to see us here in Toronto. Yeah, yeah, it, uh, it, it's life. It's life. You need to, if you want to do wines, food, and everything, you need to do a little bit of a sport to put more in equilibrium your life. Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely, that's true. And your wine, the Casalera del Diablo, Hey, Over. you said that way better than I did. Uh, I've been practicing. <laughs> <laughs> I was practicing in the closet. No, but this, this first of all, what does, what does that mean? We were uh, well, Casier is a very old brand in the country. Mm -hmm. uh, started in the mid-60s uh -huh. and means uh, the, de the devil's cellar. Ah, devil's hence the opening cellar. about the devil. So right. there's a story behind that, behind the legend. Maybe you can share it with us. Yeah, well, it's a very... Uh, old story, legendary story, mm -hmm. that um, Don Melchor de Casa Concha, yes. which is the founder of the company, mm -hmm. uh, imagine Chile 130 or 120 years ago, mm -hmm. uh, no, no electricity, dark underground cellars. Uh, this guy got some bottles, good bottles, and, and, and aged yes. uh, for some time, mm -hmm. and some workers came. Uh, steal the bottles, they the good bottles, the they took the wines, mm -hmm. and uh, so they, they doesn't know how to stop that. Uh -huh. So he create or he invent and he spread uh -huh. the rumor that the devil lives on that cellar. It was the first uh -huh. viral story <laughs> 150 yes, right. years ago. Uh -huh. So imagine the people very superstitious believe it and well. Yeah. And the wine was safe after all. Yes, it was very safe. <laughs> huh? That's a good story. Yeah. And this is an unbelievable brand. I mean, over two million cases a year? Yeah. That? Wow, yeah. that's unbelievable. Yeah, it's a brand that, uh, as, as I tell you before, we started in the mid-60s mm -hmm. with Cabernet. Yes. 
Yes. Mm -hmm. Then in the 90s, we included other varieties like uh, uh, Merlot, Sauvignon Blanc, Cabernet. Well, we started with Cabernet. Okay. Mm -hmm. And yeah. then we included the rest of the varieties, and today we are running a little bit more than 10 different varieties. Wow. And we are over 135 countries. And how Amazing. you are the chief winemaker, but how many other people do you have on your team to help make all this uh, happen? Well, Conchito is a big company, but the uh, in Casillero team, uh, I'm the chief, the, ch the chief winemaker, uh -huh. and I have two, three other uh, winemakers that work direct with me, okay. and uh, we work together. So I can do all the work. I need to run also. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I need to run. Well, I know you do a lot of running. One of the things that we found out was, first of all, that, that the grapes are sourced from all over Chile, like 600 kilometers yeah. length, where all the grapes come from to make, to make these wines. And yeah. you do a lot of traveling and go check out the different vineyards and yeah, in, the year. Right. Uh, I live uh, in the heart of, San, of uh, Maipo area, mm -hmm. which is very close to Santiago. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a very good location for me because I'm in the Maipo region where we get a lot of uh, group. So 30, 40 minutes driving from my house. So you can uh, stay home, I you don't could have say. to, yes. it's a day trip. Right, and then uh, uh, Rappel, which is another important area. I'm a uh, one hour driving, one hour and 20 minutes. Okay. So Not again, so and Casablanca, which is a coastal area, mm -hmm. close to Valparaiso and Viña del Mar, uh, beach cities. Yes, yeah. I'm an uh, hour and 30 minutes. So that is okay. the good part. Yes. And the bad part, but good part also, is Limari area, which is in the north, mm -hmm. uh, 450 kilometers. But uh, usually I, I fly or I, I drive and I go one day and I stay one night there. Oh, so what okay, do you look okay. for when you're, you're sourcing these grapes? What's the magic in the grapes that you're looking for? Well, I think that 90% of your work is on that, selecting grapes. Mm -hmm. uh, the rest that you could do in the cellar is just to do, you, you need to do correct while making, don't do mistakes, and that's it. And I don't uh, know. I had one experience making wine at home. I just wanted to try <laughs> to see what it was like. <laughs> it was a complete disaster. All right, all right. I, I'm going to leave the wine making to you, to the experts. Most yeah. Definitely. <laughs> yeah, I still have one of those bottles, by the way. It looks a little bit like uh, vinegar. <laughs> right. <laughs> but it had a great label, though. It did. It had a great label. It had the wine exactly. ladies on it. Yeah. Well, it sounds so good. Now, the, I, also, I also read somewhere that you were saying, and you have to imagine this, I guess, I don't think people would maybe necessarily think this way, that um, you say that it is much more difficult, more challenging to make two million cases of one wine than maybe just 500 cases of one wine. I think so. I think so. I think that the, when the, you do tiny amount of, of wines that uh, you, you could select very good the origin, the uh -huh. terroir, one single vineyard, that it will deliver top quality. Yeah. Right. So you, again, you don't, you don't need to do a big mistake in the cellar. You just vinify correct and you try to express as best what that vineyard uh, gives. Right. Uh, in the case of Casillero, that uh, are blends, big blends, as this, this Sauvignon Blanc is a blend of uh, maybe 30 different vineyards That's of amazing. Oh. Casablanca, Limari, Rappel area. Wow. So uh, the work is much harder. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and uh, to in order to get a, a good quality uh, wine. So yeah. I have a question, is it more a, the science of doing that or more the art of doing that? What would you say? Uh, uh, the science, it's when you select the grapes. Mm -hmm. So it is based on science? Yes. Uh, okay. Yeah, because the, the, uh, if, you, if you need or if you want or you are, if you are looking for quality, you need to select pretty good the grapes mm -hmm. and you, you think that that, that grapes uh, it will deliver good quality. Uh -huh. Them in the cellar is a little bit more a uh, logistic issue to do a correct vinification, racks, uh, bottling, that kind right. of things that are more easy. More technical, yeah, more, more, technical, more, more standardized, yeah. more easy. Uh -huh. But uh, so it's selecting not so the grapes. It's more gray areas yeah. out in the vineyard, but black and white more in, in, right. the, in but the winery. Selecting the grapes, you change the flavors. The color, the structure, the aromas, the feeling, everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that is the key. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. what is the flavor profile 
that the Sauvignon Blanc has? Like year after year, you have a consistent profile. Yeah. What What do you look for? What do you hope to achieve? And what do you achieve in this in this amazing yeah. wine? Well, I think that the Sauvignon Blanc is a variety that they, um, it's a crisp it's a crispy variety. Uh -huh. It's one of my good favorites. I love good. Sauvignon Blanc. Yeah, good, very mm -hmm. good for oysters mm -hmm. and seafood. Uh, so I always look for good acidity, mm -hmm. gooseberry character, yes. some green character, but not too much. Okay. Just uh, that gives some freshness, mm -hmm. and that's it. A medium structure, Sauvignon Blanc is not a full body wine. It's right. a medium, light. Easy uh, to drink. Mm -hmm. Easy mm -hmm. to drink. Mm -hmm. But uh, of course, in the country, um, in the past 10 years ago, we, are, we was uh, located in, air, in warmer areas uh -huh. as we are today. Today, okay. everybody's planting in the country, companies and growers uh, close to the coast. Uh -huh. So we are moving the appellation of this wine through the years. Uh -huh. right. And we will okay. continue to do uh, that in order to increase the quality. And the same with every single variety. Mm -hmm. When start, starting to appear new areas that you believe that uh, that area is better for, it's it. better for right. you start to lose uh, uh -huh. the other grapes and yes. start to move and push that people plant more on those areas. So where is Sauvignon Blanc mostly planted now in Chile? Today we are running in uh, roughly 50% in the Casablanca region, mm -hmm. which is, if you know, Santiago or Chile, yeah. from Santiago the capital. It's about uh, 60 kilometers from the coast, okay. to the coast. Mm -hmm. uh, about It's a tiny area located 20, 25 kilometers from the coast, okay. mainly from this area. And then other two coastal areas in Rapel and Limari, that is slightly south, slightly north, but okay. coastal. Uh -huh, Here okay. the main uh, uh, issue is that all vineyards are located 20, 25 kilometers from the coast. Okay, does that help you give the acidity, the good Christmas and the acidity in yes. the wine? Right. Yes, mm -hmm. because remember that uh, Pacific Ocean, mm -hmm. as in Vancouver for example, yes. uh, Pacific Ocean is very cool. Yeah. So if every single kilometer that you move close to the coast, mm -hmm. you get cooler and cooler right. uh, f uh, conditions, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So for Sauvignon Blanc, you need that, not for Cabernet. Well, Cabernet, yeah, we, exactly. we look more sun, yes. uh, warm, not for Sauvignon Blanc. I think we should try the Sauvignon Blanc, actually. I'm, yeah. I'm ready to have a little sample of well, that. Well, I think we should go to a break first. Oh, let's go to a break. Okay. <laughs> and when we get back, All we'll right. open, open it up and give it a try. Sounds good. Hey, Georgia. Hey, Suzanne. Welcome to Girls' Night Out. Did you remember the wine? Of course. After all, we're, we're the wine ladies. <laughs> we're in the kitchen. So what wine did you bring? Well, for our Girls' Night Out, we brought Girls' Night Out. I brought the Chardonnay. I brought the Merlot. Well, my guy bought me this. Too funny. The Rosé. <laughs> well, let the party begin. Girls' Night Out Wines. Hugely popular VQA wines best enjoyed with friends. Available at the LCBO and other fine retail locations. For more information, go to girlsnightoutwines.com. Hey, Suzanne, it's the only machine that I need. I know, it's a great workout in just a fraction of the time. It made me get excited about workouts again. T-Zone Vibration is making people sit up and take notice. Employing the newest technology and fitness equipment, T-Zone Vibration gives you an hour workout in just 10 minutes. Try it. Believe it. You'll want to bring one home. T-Zone Vibration. Call 905-483-8676. T-Zone Vibration. 905-483-8676. In Beauty Med Spa is constantly researching the latest innovations from around the world and bringing them home to you. It's a wonderful meeting of Eastern philosophies of skin and body care with exciting and innovative Western technology. All the In Beauty Med Spa health and wellness programs are medically supervised. A physician and dietitian are also available for client consultations. In Beauty Med Spa, inspire the nature of beauty. Visit InBeautySpa.com. Hey, Georgia. Hey, Suzanne. Welcome to Girls' Night Out. Did you remember the wine? Of course. After all, we're, we're the wine ladies. <laughs> we're in the kitchen. So what wine did you bring? Well, for our Girls' Night Out, we brought Girls' Night Out. I brought the Chardonnay. I brought the Merlot. Well, my guy bought me this. Too funny. The Rosé. <laughs> well, let the party begin. Girls' Night Out wines. Hugely popular VQA wines best enjoyed with friends. Available at the LCBO and other fine retail locations. For more information, go to girlsnightoutwines.com. All right, we're back with Marcello Papa, winemaker of Casilero del Diablo. 
Good. Whoa, that's much improved. <laughs> I've been practicing during the commercial break. Excellent, Suzanne. Excellent. So we had a nice little intro, and I think, you know, we're a bit thirsty, don't you think? Uh, yes, absolutely. You know, what's yeah. wrong with this picture? Yes. I don't know. I've been trying to push for the last 15 <laughs> minutes. Can we get into the Sauvignon Blanc? So I think we're finally going to do that. So I know we all have some, uh, some of the Sauvignon Blanc in our glasses now. Right. And this is the, oh, it's the 2011 yes. vintage that we have. Mm. Right. Okay, Very awesome. fresh and crispy. Mm -hmm. Very fresh, yep. yeah. Mm. So we haven't had our vintage yet, our 2011, but of course no. you're on the other side of the world. It's so six you months guys are ahead uh, of early. Us. Little, yeah. little bit exactly. earlier. Yeah. yeah, wonderful. Okay. Good. So when we, sh we were talking about the availability of this product, we know it is in 110 countries, or your wines are in 110 countries. Yeah. It's quite widely available in Canada as well. The Sauvignon Blanc, yes, mm -hmm. right. It's, uh, it's one of the first that we arrived at, I don't know, 20 years ago. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you could find in many in many places. Mm -hmm. And it's a great price point, because I think it's, it's only around maybe $11 in Ontario anyways. It probably sits around that across Canada as well, maybe between 11 and 13, depending on where you are. Right. So a great value wine. Right. Fantastic. Yeah, I, th I think so. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Good job. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We like that you've got a nice screw cap on it as well. Yeah, we changed that. We did it, this wine for many, many years with natural cork. Yeah. And uh, I think that uh, five, six years ago, we changed it for a screw cap. Uh -huh. The screw cap is very appropriate for Sauvignon Blancs, some aromatic varieties. And uh, now people will start to see some screw caps in the reds. Yes. That uh, mm -hmm. probably we will do something in the future. Did you notice any difference at all in, in terms of with the wine, the screw cap versus the, the natural, natural cork? cork? Yeah. yeah, I think that uh, uh, the natural cork, it's a live, uh, mm -hmm. a live product mm -hmm. yeah. uh, with some porosity mm -hmm. and uh, some air, oxygen. Yeah. Uh, oxygen is the enemy of the wines, but also is a very the good friend. friend. Mm -hmm. yes. So when you receive a little bit of uh, oxygen, it's beautiful for reds and also for the wine making. Mm -hmm. But uh, in Sauvignon Blanc, so, uh, the oxygen is a completely enemy. Uh -huh. uh, Sauvignon Blanc, Pinot Noir, for example, yes. are varieties that uh, if you oxidize a little bit, you lose the um, charming, the flavors the yeah. you you you, you yeah. lose everything yes. so screw up for sauvignon blanc mm -hmm. it's a hermetic uh, top mm -hmm. that uh, it uh, you could keep the sauvignon blanc for, for probably you heard for many many years that sauvignon blanc you you can age yes uh, you mm -hmm. need so to in a drink screw cap you could age it longer well sauvignon blanc is not a variety for mm -hmm. aging mm -hmm. but uh, you could buy the bottle and if you drink, if you are not drinking today and you are living for one year more, yes. with the screw cap, it will okay. still be okay. very good, very good, very okay. good. Okay, yeah. okay. Whereas if, whether, if it was under a core closure, yeah, not necessarily it would start yeah, to Yeah, you start yeah. to lose the, it will be not bad, yeah. but uh, the, the fresh aromas. Fruit, the probably the aromas. Yes, yeah. it's gone, yes. it's gone. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Well, for sure, I, when I just took my, when I took my first sip, it's like you really feel the, the, the brightness, the crispness, uh -huh. the acidity in the mouth. And you know what? It's almost like a little bit of a puckering, like, mmm, that's delicious. Uh -huh. I, want, I want some more, or I would like to have something to eat to go with that. Right, right, yeah. right. Very it has a, Yeah, it has a lot of uh, gooseberry character, mm -hmm. a little bit of, of uh, asparagus, but not a heavy aroma yes. of asparagus. Yeah. Asparagus, yeah. Um, and it's very juicy in the mm -hmm. mouth feeling. Is the acidity is very vibrant, fresh, crispy. So it's, it's interesting uh, for terrace summertime. It's beautiful. Wonderful. And we were we have some oysters yeah. that uh, I believe Classic. the chef from Epic from Restaurant, the Epic Restaurant mm -hmm. sent over from the Royal York Hotel, the right. Fairmount. Yeah, right, right. right. Perfect classic pairing with mm -hmm. Sauvignon Blanc. I think so. I think that the oyster usually you could do very good with a, a sparkling wine mm -hmm. or champagne. Yes. Uh, uh, Chablis, I think it works mm -hmm. very good. Yes. And in general term, with Sauvignon Blancs, it do very, very good. Yeah. Uh, with very aromatic Sauvignon Blancs, mm -hmm. uh, you need to be a little bit more carefully. Uh -huh. But 90% uh, of the Sauvignon Blancs do very good. Yeah. I get a little bit of lime in this. Yes, mm -hmm. it's very citrus character. Mm -hmm. yeah? Yes, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's lovely. Yes, it's very good. And also some grapefruit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. yeah, that's great. 
I think Sauvignon Blanc is a, is a fantastic variety also for, like, like you were saying, like for just sipping on to start the evening off or, yes. the e or late afternoon or well, yeah. even early afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> so what it's made you decide to become a winemaker? Was that something you aspired to when you were a young boy or? Uh, it's a good question. So I think that um, when I, uh, I decided to, when I was in the school, well, you need to decide what you are doing, or right. at least uh, in a big uh, area. Uh -huh. And uh, I definitely I will move into the scientific area. Uh -huh. Mathematic I like, but uh, I'm, not, I'm not good. Okay. Uh, <laughs> then uh, the lawyers and all that, a little bit more of, uh, ahead. Uh -huh. uh, so scientific was my, my, my issue. Okay. Um, I start to study agronomist. And then in agronomist, there are some uh, course of uh, winemaking and uh, enologist. Okay, yeah. And I said, mm, because I'm moving to fruiticulture. Uh -huh. and, uh, but I said, well, I will took some of those course to, to learn mm -hmm. about wines. Mm -hmm. And I took it and, well, I never stopped. And that, yeah. yeah. And the rest is history. The rest is yes, history. Yeah. Yeah. Now, your, your parents were from Piemonte. Are they Italian, your, your ancestor uh, or their it, ancestors? Mix it, mix oh, it. Okay. It's, uh, my four grandparents are Italian. Uh-huh. Uh, was born in Italy. Okay. Uh, one was born in Chile, but uh, he, his heritage is Italian. But it's a mix of uh, Modena, Piemonte, Ancona, okay. so central and north Italy. Okay. Were they in the wine business? Uh, no. No? No. Wow, okay. No. Very cool. That's interesting. Yeah. But uh, they're very good men, so... Aha. Uh -huh. Well, you like to cook, too. No, my wife. Oh, your wife <laughs> likes to cook? Yes. Yeah. Okay, all right. Well, Somebody just, wrote somewhere yeah, that he was reading about you, and, and I called you the charming winemaker, so... <laughs> <laughs> I also have to say that we that you really like Italian shoes, apparently. <laughs> yes, 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 of course. <laughs> what kind of shoes does he have on? No, these oh, are not too Italian, but... Uh, they're, they're not fine. too Italian? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're a hybrid. <laughs> yeah, right, right. No, there was an article I think that was written up in the in the Economist actually, yeah. a very prestigious uh, magazine uh, newspaper out of the United Kingdom. Yeah. And um, they they had reported that uh, Marcelo Papa is one of the um, the most respected young winemakers in the world. Wow. That yeah. is quite something. Congratulations yeah. on that. Yeah, it's a, I think that uh, um, it's a long work, uh, mm -hmm. a lot of passion. Yes. Yeah. Uh, a lot of time um, taking people and uh, joint people, uh, putting a team to pushing for something. Yes. Uh, yeah. And I think that uh, the result is, 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 uh, is that. Yeah? And then you have to do all these press junkets and interviews with yeah, people of course, and of course. dinners. Do you enjoy speaking in front of people? We, we had a winemaker on our show not too long ago that didn't like that part of the mm. being a winemaker yeah. that you ha you you need to stand up in front of crowds and take people through your your wines and yeah I do you like do you enjoy that part I enjoy or? it I enjoy it uh -huh. I think that um, uh, especially where uh, I'm living in in Chile which is in one corner of the world uh -huh. so but we all live in a corner of the world yeah but you are more <laughs> close to that than us <laughs> <laughs> so. In our country, uh, I think that is very important the feedback, uh -huh. uh, yeah. the feedback that journalists, consumers, mm -hmm. uh, give you, uh, even when people goes to Chile yes. and taste our wines and, and they said I like it, I don't like it, I like for that reason, I don't like for that reason, mm -hmm. and also in a, in a Canada, UK or US or wherever where you go to the markets, you show your wines, and you receive a very uh, a good feedback. Yes. Good or bad, uh -huh. but uh, it's important to put in your uh, head mm -hmm. and start to change or right. follow, follow with, with some life. So yeah. that part, uh, for me, I, th I like. No, no mm -hmm. problem with that. What about the people of Chile? Do they like to... Um, experiment with wines and drink other regions wines or is it more the wines of Chile that they enjoy as, like like in California you drink California wine when you go to California right. wine country and here Ontario wine country yeah. well when you go when you go to every single country that uh, produce wines mm -hmm. people uh, is very local 
yeah. and and people uh, feel very good and comfortable with his wines. Right. Uh, it goes with their cuisine. Because their cuisine mm -hmm. and, and because it's a product that uh, you are pr you are producing and uh, and all that. So in Chile, uh, of course, we uh, the consumers ninety nine percent of the wine that Chilean consumers uh, are uh, Chilean wines, but also because wines from Australia, France, or mm -hmm. wherever, mm -hmm. arrive into the country by the distance yeah. uh, and an maybe not a very competitive price. Yes, uh -huh. right. Uh, yeah, so expensive. at the end, when yeah. you have a bottle of Casiero and a bottle of um, foreign uh, wine, much yeah. more expensive one, you know yeah. that the quality is pretty close, well, at the end, you go and you, right. you drink uh, your wine. Yeah, yeah. the mm -hmm. cost of transporting it all those miles definitely is reflected in the retail price. Yes, yes. right. Yes. Uh, yeah. 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 Now you guys also um, just made some uh, uh, some in a very interesting alliance with the um, the Manchester. Well, right. it's the United Football. I, I guess Which it's our really soccer, soccer, right? right. Soccer. It's football. Yeah. That's kind of an interesting thing that just happened. Maybe you can tell us about that too. Well, uh, yes, it's it's uh, it's another part of the of our our work. Mm -hmm. Marketing people uh, a year ago. Yeah. They joined with Manchester, Manchester United. Mm -hmm. They did it, uh, this uh, kind of uh, agreement. Right. And uh, it's quite it's nice because it's quite curious because uh, one it's very exciting yeah. because Man United is a really big team of the uh, here, mm -hmm. but uh, they are helping us to push our wines right. in countries out of UK market. Oh, not okay. in UK market. Oh, how so? It because, uh, for example, in Asia mm -hmm. or South America, many people uh, follow uh, Manchester United. Oh, I see. So okay. it's in Brazil or yeah. Asia or China or whatever, even mm -hmm. in Canada. Uh -huh. But in UK, it's tough because uh, people that live in London. Uh, they don't want that. that uh, they don't want to see Manchester United. They want yeah. to see Arsenal, Tottenham, uh -huh. or Fulham, or whatever. Right. So right, right, right. it's uh, it UK is very local. Uh -huh. So even in Manchester, because it's Man Manchester City, it's even more uh, has more followers in uh, in the city than Man United. Uh -huh. Yeah. So it's interesting what yeah. happened. Yeah. And you had a bunch of the, uh, were they alumni football players that came over to Chile, not, uh, came over to the winery not that long ago, just a couple of weeks ago, no? But the, they, the players came to Chile to visit the Casalera del Diablo? Or yes, no? yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah? yeah. <laughs> it was um, uh, three weeks ago. Oh, okay. Yeah. That must have been fun. Yeah, very fun. Uh, but more fun when we go to the <laughs> Manchester United <laughs> <laughs> Stadium. There you go. All right, we're going to go to another break. And okay. when we get back, we're going to try the wine that's made of Carmenere, which is now the, the new signature grape variety of Chile. I love Carmenere. We'll be right back. Hey, Georgia. Hey, Suzanne. Welcome to Girls' Night Out. Did you remember the wine? Of course. After all, we're, we're the wine ladies. <laughs> we're in the kitchen. So what wine did you bring? Well, for our Girls' Night Out, we brought Girls' Night Out. I brought the Chardonnay. I brought the Merlot. Well, my guy bought me this. Too funny. The Rosé. <laughs> well, let the party begin. Girls' Night Out Wines. Hugely popular VQA wines best enjoyed with friends. Available at the LCBO and other fine retail locations. For more information, go to girlsnightoutwines.com. Hey, Suzanne, it's the only machine that I need. I know, it's a great workout in just a fraction of the time. It made me get excited about workouts again. T-Zone Vibration is making people sit up and take notice. Employing the newest technology and fitness equipment, T-Zone Vibration gives you an hour workout in just 10 minutes. Try it. Believe it. You'll want to bring one home. T-Zone Vibration. Call 905-483-8676. T-Zone Vibration. 905-483-8676. M Beauty Med Spa is constantly researching the latest innovations from around the world and bringing them home to you. It's a wonderful meeting of Eastern philosophies of skin and body care with exciting and innovative Western technology. All the In Beauty Med Spa health and wellness programs are medically supervised. A physician and dietitian are also available for client consultations. In Beauty Med Spa, inspire the nature of beauty. Visit InBeautySpa.com. All right, we're back, and uh, we are doing the wines of Chile today. Um, 
just finished up a fantastic Sauvignon Blanc. We have Marcello Papa here. And uh, today we're going to now get into the Carmenere, mm -hmm. I think. Uh, tell us a little bit about Carmenere. What exactly is Carmenere? Well, Carmenere is a, it's a variety. It's a red variety, mm -hmm. a beautiful variety that uh, the origin of Carmenere, it's in the Bordeaux area right. where came uh, great Cabernet, Merlot, Cap Franc. Mm -hmm. But uh, we got a, inf a very strong influence after, after the phylloxera attack right. 130 years ago mm -hmm. uh, in France. So arrived a lot of uh, people from France, from the Bordeaux area. Uh -huh. the, the heritage or the, mm, the biggest influence of French people in our country in terms of viticulture Came it's from Bordeaux, from, from Bordeaux uh -huh. right. Um, they bring his own material, Carmenere, of course, that he has a lot on those days, mm -hmm. but the phylloxera almost killed Demolished and them, was yeah. the most sensible, sensible, sensitive, sensitive, sensitive mm -hmm. uh, was the most sensitive variety for phylloxera, so almost right. disappeared. So they bring it, uh, Carmenere, Cabernet, Cap Franc, Merlot, mm -hmm. and we start to run those varieties 130 years ago, Yeah, but uh, we are Latin, so we confused the Carmenere <laughs> with the Merlot. Why, because you're Latin? Is that what right. you said? <laughs> so we are very disorganized sometimes. Uh, we are not yeah, like full of life. Anglo That's Anglo Saxon, right? uh, So we mix it and uh, we lose the Carmenere variety mm -hmm. and we start to produce Merlot uh -huh. for many, many years. Yeah. Uh, but in 1994, a French guy goes and we are in a... In a Science science mm -hmm. we are in a vineyard said well we have the merlot no no come on this is not merlot it's carmenere uh. eh, eh, <laughs> come on <laughs> so 90 percent of the country was planted with carmenere thinking it was merlot. believing that uh, it was uh, merlot wow so it was a huge problem on those days mm -hmm. no one knew what carmenere yeah because really we are saying on those days hundreds of cases or yeah. thousands of cases of merlot right and we don't have merlot uh -huh. so uh -oh. that's a bit of a problem. <laughs> so, right. You imposter, you. Yeah, yeah. yeah but uh, in, uh, in viticulture, you, yeah. uh, it happens that that yes. kind of thing that sometimes you confuse varieties and you 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 never know. Exactly, because I think the Carmenere and the Merlot leaves are, are very close. similar looking. Yeah. It's very today, close. Right today, when you know exactly the difference, yeah. you say Merlot and Carmenere. Right. Mm -hmm. But right. when you start to see the cluster, the size of the leaves, and the color, you say, yeah. I, there are some reasons because why people confuse it. Right. But uh, yeah. the wines are completely different. And it you was also 150 yeah. years ago, 200 yeah, years ago. Remember, it was different than yeah, exactly. what we have today. Remember in the 1940s in, in Chile, California, wherever, yeah. you, you, do you have red wine or white yeah. wine? Right. It was a different right. world. <laughs> different world. Indeed. Today yeah. is Cabernet, Merlot, right. Special Camel glasses. Bay, special yeah. glasses. Yeah. Yeah. Today is right, a more yeah. sophisticated... Even the clones, like Vice yeah, 21 right. for Riesling or something. Right, right, like right, really, right. really, really yeah. specific. Yeah. yeah, it's an so interesting story. We started in 1998 to, to do a straight Carmenere uh -huh. uh, in one of our brands, Terruño. Okay. And then in 2001, we included uh, Carmenere in Casillero. Uh -huh. And uh, it's very successful. Okay. Uh, today, after Cabernet, mm -hmm. is, uh, is coming the Sauvignon Blanc, Merlot, and then Carmenere. For the most planted, you mean? No, in Variety terms of cases. In terms of yeah. Say that again. Say, oh, say okay. that once more. Okay. Cabernet is the main, number one. is number one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Second one is Sauvignon Blanc, which mm -hmm. is growing so fast in the wow. last uh, five yeah. years, 10 years. Uh, Merlot, which is always Merlot. I even when people said, no, we are boring about Merlot, Merlot is a variety that people like it yes. and drink it. Uh, and then Carmenere, very close to the Merlot, mm -hmm. very, very close. Wow. So, so it's interesting variety because it's soft, mm -hmm. velvety, um, Plummy, a lot yes. of uh, a bitter Dark chocolate. Yes. Yeah. The only yeah. thing is there are some Carmenere that are a little more green than others. Uh -huh. So you need to check what type of Carmenere you like it and yes. then you, you, you follow. And this is okay. a 2010, I think? Mm -hmm. This is 2010. Mm. So how long could you keep this wine? It's a wine that you could keep it for five, seven years. Five to seven Casiero. years. Mm. Okay. Uh, easy. Mm. It's a wine that delivers a lot of uh, bitter chocolate in the north. Oh, that's delicious. Uh, dark and bitter chocolate, um, mocha, uh, a little bit of plums, mocha, yeah. 
And they mean the mouth feeling is mm. round and soft. Mm? It's lovely. It's yeah. very, very nice, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it's sort of a, a, away from that vegetal kind of side, that green yes. side. This is more leaning in the other direction. Yes, I love that. Conchitoro yeah. and Casillero from the beginning, mm -hmm. we are pushing a riper style of Carmenere. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Today, more and more people understand that consumers mm -hmm. like the ripe, yes. mature style of Carmenere and not right. the green style. Right, yes. And I think that every single day there are less and less and less with that green style. Uh -huh. But probably we need another 10 years to, to be 100% ripe and mature. But right. if you like Carmenere Casillero, fold th th those styles. Yeah, and this should be uh, pair beautifully with the lamb that we've got here. Yeah. Uh, yes. From the right. epic restaurant here at the Royal York. So everybody's going to grab a chop. Is that how let's, we're going to do it? Okay, can you reach your chop there, uh, your lamb chop there? Um, yeah. Marcelo, if you can, and Suzanne, I'm going to grab one for you. Okay. Actually, you go ahead. Whatever is closest to you. Oop. Oh. And what's the other? Um, is it a samosa we have, or I think it's a ve veggie, like a veggie pastry kind a of veggie thing. Veggie pastry. Oh. Yeah. Okay, Suzanne, well, I usually. Can grab uh, one. Can you do that? Thanks. Okay. Usually, um, carbonara. It's a variety that uh, it do very, very good with lamb. Uh huh. Ex it's ex extraordinary because it has the power and the structure to support the very something not heavy but uh, um, firm aromas of the lamb yes mm? yes mm. that's delicious we'll have to try that together mm. well and lamb Compliment happens to, to be show. one of my mm. favorite foods as well oh. actually mm. i absolutely love lamb yeah. mm -hmm. mm. a little bit yeah. of try it's a little bit of nice, wine huh? with that very good mm -hmm. try it with the lamb mm. Mm. yeah i've been buying a lot more carbonara now as well Mm. Yeah. Mm. I think uh, I think that the, when we start with the Carmen Air um, in the early 2000s, yes, uh, the the quality of the Carmen Air was very spread from the very green mm -hmm. to the very ripe. Okay. So we confuse a little bit the consumers uh, in order what is Carmen Air? Okay. Is green? Is is ripe? Right. Wh what is that? So not you guys, not Casalero, but you mean the the various producers Chile as a of country. the Carmenere, right? Okay. Right. Uh, I think now the quality of the Carmenere is more consistent, mm -hmm. and probably eighty percent or ninety percent of the Carmeneres are ripe and mature. Right. But uh, still, there are five ten percent that are more green. Right. So you need to to see the brands and follow uh -huh. follow the brands. Hmm? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's the power in knowing a brand too. I, I know that I'm very brand conscious. It's like um, if you try a wine that's one great variety and you go, wow, that was excellent. Then you're more apt to you know go to the, go to the producer and say, okay, I know this is a good producer. Right. Because their the producer is very important. Yeah. Right. So yeah. I know they make a good Chardonnay, for example. Let me try their their Sauvignon or or their Merlot. Yeah. Or whatever it is. There are there are uh, consistent. Right. Uh, and when you see a good brand, mm -hmm. uh, usually you will find a good product in every single product that that these guys. They do. Right. That is not just in wines. It's I think it's in uh, in everything. That's true. Chance. That's mm -hmm. true. Yeah. iPhone, iPad, <laughs> whatever else there is. Right. right yeah. Right. That's great. That's delicious. delicious. That yeah. Was delicious. And this one is this one I think is around the same price point again. Like I think maybe like one dollar, two dollars more. The other yeah. one was around eleven. This one's around twelve, thirteen dollars. Yeah. yeah. It's great. Awesome. It's a good price. It's it a is good a good price. price. Yeah. And it's a wine that uh, is getting good scores. Uh, quite often. Uh huh. So I know that was something else I read about you. You, he, Marcelo, consistently gets scores over ninety for all of his <laughs> wines. Yeah, so yeah. Hey, we have a real celebrity that's coming in today. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. No, very, right. very nice. Yeah. So should we try it with the um, the samosa? Sure, sure, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. See what that. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you can reach that over there because that's completely it, different than yeah. the lamb that we just had. Now this is with this is a veggie. Mm -hmm. You need to explain that. What, yeah. what is that? A, a grilled. What's that? What is that? It's a, a grilled. I think I think it's um I think they're grilled vegetables inside actually inside the pastry. I don't know what vegetables are in there. Uh huh. We'll but, find um, out. In the I guess we'll find out. <laughs> I, you know what? I will pass one over to you if you can't reach it. There you go. Okay. Right that's backwards, but that's Thank okay. Thank you. So where do you see the um, the wines of Chile going in the next five years? What do you, what's going to happen? I think that uh, Chile, Susan is uh, taking away mm. 
in the last uh, 15 years, yeah, I, I will start again. Or in another way, if you see Chile 20 years ago, it's just Cabernet. Just mm -hmm. bread, mm -hmm. just Cabernet. And in the last uh, 15 years, we are doing a big effort in order to uh, spread the vineyards and the vines into the, into the country, yeah. looking for top quality in, of every single uh, variety in a specific spot. Mm -hmm. So I think that in the next years, you will see more and more and more diversity mm. of Chile. So it, Chile is not, not anymore, still, but uh, Cabernets are good, right. but uh, you will start to, to see much and better Sauvignon Blancs, Chardonnay, Pinot mm -hmm. Noir, Malbec, Merlot, Carmenere, whatever. Well, I and guess your country has, has the ge ge geography also to support because, yes. all those varietals. Yes. You know, you have yes. all the different microclimates, you're such a long, skinny country. Yes. You probably can do that, make yeah. great wines of all varietals. Yeah, I think that that is the key. The, uh, I think that there are countries that, that they could produce a uh, really top level of one variety mm. and they produce it. Right. But I think that Chile, it's, uh, as you said, it's, uh, it's geography is really diverse. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have top, top areas to grow Sauvignon Blanc, but they're awful for Cabernet, and others mm. that are top for Cabernet and mm -hmm. not, not good for Chardonnay or whatever. So I think that it will came, mm -hmm. uh, or you will see in Chile in the last, in the next, uh, uh, five or ten years. I think they've also done an excellent job in terms of marketing the country uh, as a, a wine region. People mm. definitely believe that the wines of Chile are excellent, great value, mm. and uh, I know a lot of my friends do purchase a lot of wines from Chile as a sort of a regular, right, yeah. regular mm -hmm. region I think that, that they would buy. Yeah, I think that the beauty of Chile is that you don't have risk. You right, go to, right. you, you buy the bottle and there are not, you, you, you don't have a risky bottle mm -hmm. uh -huh. in general terms. Uh, so that makes the base yeah. Yeah. to keep moving and, and keep uh, producing a more diverse and a richer style of wines. Mm -hmm. mm, this is good. Excellent. Yeah, the little bit of spiciness in that, um, mm. in the, the vegetables. Mm. That's okay, great. I think we'll I go think to another break that. and when we get back we're going to try the Cabernet. Okay, good. all right. Don't go good. away. Hey Suzanne, it's the only machine that I need. I know, it's a great workout in just a fraction of the time. It made me get excited about workouts again. T-Zone Vibration is making people sit up and take notice. Employing the newest technology and fitness equipment, T-Zone Vibration gives you an hour workout in just 10 minutes. Try it. Believe it. You'll want to bring one home. T-Zone Vibration. Call 905-483-8676. T-Zone Vibration. 905-483-8676. Georgia, hey, Suzanne. Welcome to Girls' Night Out. Did you remember the wine? Of course. After all, we're, we're the, the wine ladies. <laughs> we're in the kitchen. So what wine did you bring? Well, for our Girls' Night Out, we brought Girls' Night Out. I brought the Chardonnay. I brought the Merlot. Well, my guy bought me this. Too funny. The Rosé. <laughs> well, let the party begin. Girls' Night Out wines. Hugely popular VQA wines best enjoyed with friends. Available at the LCBO and other fine retail locations. For more information, go to girlsnightoutwines.com. Hey, Suzanne, it's the only machine that I need. I know, it's a great workout in just a fraction of the time. It made me get excited about workouts again. T-Zone Vibration is making people sit up and take notice. Employing the newest technology and fitness equipment, T-Zone Vibration gives you an hour workout in just 10 minutes. Try it. Believe it. You'll want to bring one home. T-Zone Vibration. Call 905-483-8676. T-Zone Vibration. 905-483-8676. M Beauty Med Spa is constantly researching the latest innovations from around the world and bringing them home to you. It's a wonderful meeting of Eastern philosophies of skin and body care with exciting and innovative Western technology. All the In Beauty Med Spa health and wellness programs are medically supervised. A physician and dietitian are also available for client consultations. In Beauty Med Spa, inspire the nature of beauty. Visit InBeautySpa.com. All right, so now we're going to do the Cabernet Sauvignon, which mm -hmm. you were saying earlier is the most planted grape variety in Chile. Right, right. And um, was and is the signature varietal still of your company. Is that true? Yeah, it's true. I think that um, 
Cabernet Susan is the is the variety of, of Chile. And if you see probably 40% of the total production of, of Chile is Cabernet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, okay. it because, as you said, jo Georgia, before, that uh, we have a very strong heritage or influence from the Bordeaux people. Yes. And uh, our food, or w for some reason, Cabernet is the variety that we have. It marries more. well with it. Yeah. Okay. And, al and also because uh, Cabernet is a variety that you could plant it in many areas in the country, mm -hmm. and you normally it's it's pretty good. Yeah. Of course, there are differences, but uh, normally it's pretty good everywhere. Oh, okay. So unlike the Pinot Noir, that is very very fussy. Yeah. That doesn't work for Pinot Noir, but Cab's Pinot a little more yes easy Pinot going. Pinot yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. a good way P of putting Pinot it. Pinot Noir <laughs> is uh, it, you need to be very uh, strict with Pinot Noir. Yes. In the in the place that you plant, mm -hmm. uh, how you do everything. Right. Cabernet is a more um, easy variety for us because right. we have the weather and the soil. Yes. For uh, good, good for Cabernet. Yes. And that's it. It's, it's not more complicated than that. Mm -hmm. Okay. But we're moving away from the Casalera del Diablo because now we're moving to another another uh, brand or another yes. winery that mm -hmm. you also make the wine for, the Marques Casa Concha. Right. Which yeah. is has some kind of royalty basis. I mean, f finding. I, I mean, origin or origin. Let's just say, doesn't right. it? From yeah, the King yeah. of Spain or something. Yeah, they are one uh, director of the of the board. Mm -hmm. of Contidor that uh, has the title of Marques de Casa Concha. Oh. That uh, it's a title that came, f I don't know, 200 years ago. Okay. And through the families is passing and Passed passing out. and passing. Okay. Right. So nice. that's Don Melcher, who's the founder. Uh, yes, he's right. Right? So he's and like I think that it was part of the family uh, with, the, with this uh, director. Ah, so oh, okay, okay. And they got the title and all okay. that. Okay, yeah. all right. Yeah. So okay, so let's try this. And how does how does the Marquez Casa Concha brand differ from the the Casillero? Well, Casillero, as I told you before, is a big brand. Yeah. Where we mix uh, 10, 15, 20 different vineyards, and we make a blend. Right. And we do one single Cabernet or Merlot or whatever. Yeah. In the case of Marquez de Casa Concha, it's a single vineyard concept. Okay. So this is uh -huh. Puente Alto Vineyard. So how many cases okay. do you make? Uh, about 55,000, 60,000 cases. Okay. It's not little because... <laughs> it's not little, is, I, yeah. I hate to tell you. Yeah. That's still a lot of wine. Yeah, still well, <laughs> is I guess big. compared to two million though. <laughs> yeah, right. Right. Everything is big on this show. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Conchidor is big, it's pretty big. And I want, I want to tell you even more that uh, Canada mm -hmm. is our second market for Marquez de Casa Concha. Wow. Uh, wow. It's a very important brand for us. Mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> Canada is number two. So we are very happy with that. Huh? Yeah, it's great. So we're yeah. number, you're saying we're number one? We're number, number two. One, number two. Number okay, two. we got to tweet about that. Let's take a <laughs> we're number two. Oh, right. I, so is the US number one, the United Kingdom number three, and no. we're number two? Uh, or is it the other way? No, I think that it's uh, US, Canada. Right. And then I'm not sure how, how uh, who came. Probably Chile. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, probably okay. Chile and them. Right. And UK is not is not uh, is not big. Uh, Casiero del Diablo is very big in in the UK market. Oh, I see. Okay, so yeah. just specifically for the Marquez Casa yeah. Concha. Oh, okay. Right. 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 Gotcha. Okay. Well, so it's a Cabernet that uh, delivered the classic aromas of Cabernet, mm -hmm. a lot of uh, plums. A lot of cassis flavors. Yes. Uh, the oak is very well integrated because this is a barrel aging uh, Cabernet Sauvignon. Okay. Very cla if it's, it's a kind of a textbook of Cabernet Sauvignon. Okay. So if you right. want to taste a good Cabernet, right. go for Marquis and taste and that's it. It's very easy. It's a classic standard of Cabernet. So no surprises in the glass. You just know it's going to be a great classic yummy Cabernet right. Sauvignon. Right. Exactly. Right. Exactly. <laughs> mm -hmm. So. I'm busy tweeting. You guys enjoy drinking or tasting that wine, or like? Mmm. Mm -hmm. Lovely. Also, no. they must have a good winemaker over there. Yeah, <laughs> I, I suppose. Well, I don't know who that. Who that? That's great. That's really, yeah. really. It, it is lovely. It is sort of classic. I, there's a bit of black currant in there, I think, as yeah. well. Just yeah. a tiny bit, but yeah, very great. Awesome. A lot of a uh, black currant character. Mm -hmm. Uh, round soft tannins. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, I the tannins you, are nice. Yeah. 
Very nice, and then this is a wine that uh, you could uh, mm, uh, keep in the bottle for 10 years, no problem. Okay, wow, that's yeah. great. It's a fantastic Beautiful. wine, I think that with the Very food... Very lovely. Yeah, we have to try it with, what have we got here? We've got a, a, a beef tenderloin, I think. Yeah, right. On a, we don't know what that, what that little uh, pastry, or is it a brioche or something? I'm not really sure what it is, but um, yeah. that should marry nicely with the cab. Cab yeah. and beef, I guess, are one of those classics. Yeah, very classic. Yeah. Very classic, yeah. Okay. But uh, this Cabernet is round soft, so yes. it goes very also with, so. uh, with other type of food, but um, with cheese, is beautiful. Mm. Did you bring any cheese? No. Oh. This time, no. <laughs> next time. Next time. Next time. All right. Well, let's see. Yes, sure. Time. Let's grab one. I'll get one for you, Suzanne. Yeah. No. Nope. There we go. Oh, hey. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you, get away. <laughs> Fly away. There you go, my dear. Thank you. Looks great. Mm, looks yeah. good. Mm -hmm. Very, very nice. They're very different, like the cab and the, ca uh, and the Carmenere. I guess it depends what you're in the mood for. Yep. The, the, two, the two red wines. like um, The Cabernet and the Carmenere. Yes, yeah. yeah. Very they distinct the very, very, very different. Mm -hmm. uh, Carmenere, it's, um, it's a variety that uh, it delivers very round and soft tanks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Cabernet, a little more firm. Yeah. structure tannins mm -hmm. so if you could age a little bit the Cabernet yeah it would be very good uh -huh. if it's not well okay but uh, but Cabernet are more ready to to easy yeah. uh, right. at, at the beginning mm -hmm. yeah yes yeah so. although I think this Cabernet is great right now it's I really delicious. like the way it is right yes. now actually right, right. and like you say I get it in five years it'll, it'll it'll advance and I guess the tannins will get softer and the yeah. The fruit character will change a little bit, yeah. but it's great now too. Well, that is one of the one of the beauties of uh, my Po Cabernet. This wine came from my Po region, mm -hmm. uh, right south of uh, Santiago City, okay. uh, with the alluvial soil, so a lot of uh, rocks, stones, and sand. So usually, the quality of the tannins from that kind of uh, of soils. Mm -hmm. um, are, uh, the tines are very round and soft, so you could enjoy it uh, very soon. Mm. So if, if uh, some of our viewers want to come to Chile to visit wineries in that region, what would you recommend like a typical, uh, would be like a, a week or two weeks spending uh -huh. in Chile? Like what, what could they do while they're there besides visiting um, some of the fabulous wineries? What would you recommend? Well, you could do many, many kind of tours uh, mm -hmm. from Chile, but if you arrive to Santiago, which is the capital, mm -hmm. uh, you could do a tour uh, from the wineries that are surrounding Santiago, mm -hmm. which Conchitor is, is one of them that uh, from 45 minutes. Okay. But uh, after that, if you are living in a part of Canada, very uh, cool and wet and with wild forest, yeah. I mm -hmm. recommend you um, go to the northern part of Chile, okay. to Atacama Desert, oh, yeah. which is amazing, beautiful nights, blue skies, uh, a desert area, very, very nice. Or if you uh, live in Canada in an area that you missed, green forest and all that, yeah. that maybe there are not many here no. in Canada, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you could move uh, into the south. That uh, The south of Chile is pretty close to Canada. It's uh, a lot of forest, yeah. uh, glaciers, yeah. um, lakes. So if you are a Canadian, I will recommend you move to the north. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And Santiago, of to course. experience beach. something a little bit different. Yes, of yes. course. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Sounds lovely. Well, you know what? The, I guess we're at the pretty well at the end of the show. Mm -hmm. But thank you so much for coming in and uh, bringing your wines and sharing your, your winemaking experience with us. It's been wonderful. Thank you very much. And you are very charming. Yeah. What do you think, Georgia? I think he's awesome. Marcelo, <laughs> great to meet you. I really, really enjoyed our time here together. Me too, and uh, good luck with your next uh, works. Huh? Okay, and cheers. Likewise, with cheers. your next vintage. Yeah, yeah. Thank cheers you. to your, your cheers. tour here in Canada. Cheers, Welcome. Huh? Cheers, right. Marcelo. Thank you, everybody. Cheers. Everyone, have a great week. We've been watching the wine ladies here. Bye bye. Hey, Georgia. Hey, Suzanne. Welcome to Girls' Night Out. Did you remember the wine? Of course. After all, we're, we're the wine ladies. <laughs> we're in the kitchen. So what wine did you bring? Well, for our Girls' Night Out, we brought Girls' Night Out. I brought the Chardonnay. I brought the Merlot. Well, my guy bought me this. Too funny. The Rosé. Well, let the party begin. Girls' Night Out Wines. Hugely popular VQA wines best enjoyed with friends. Available at the LCBO and other fine retail locations. For more information, go to girlsnightoutwines.com. 
Hey, Suzanne, it's the only machine that I need. I know. It's a great workout in just a fraction of the time. It made me get excited about workouts again. T-Zone Vibration is making people sit up and take notice. Employing the newest technology and fitness equipment, T-Zone Vibration gives you an hour workout in just 10 minutes. Try it. Believe it. You'll want to bring one home. T-Zone Vibration. Call 905-483-8676. T-Zone Vibration. 905-483-8676. In Beauty Med Spa is constantly researching the latest innovations from around the world and bringing them home to you. It's a wonderful meeting of Eastern philosophies of skin and body care with exciting and innovative Western technology. All the In Beauty Med Spa health and wellness programs are medically supervised. A physician and dietitian are also available for client consultations. In Beauty Med Spa, inspire the nature of beauty. Visit InBeautySpa.com. Hey, Georgia. Hey, Suzanne. Welcome to Girls' Night Out. Did you remember the wine? Of course. After all, we're, we're the wine ladies. <laughs> we're in the kitchen. So what wine did you bring? Well, for our Girls' Night Out, we brought Girls' Night Out. I brought the Chardonnay. I brought the Merlot. Well, my guy bought me this. Too funny. The Rosé. Well, let the party begin. Girls' Night Out wines. Hugely popular VQA wines best enjoyed with friends. Available at the LCBO and other fine retail locations. For more information, go to girlsnightoutwines.com. In Beauty Med Spa is constantly researching the latest innovations from around the world and bringing them home to you. It's a wonderful meeting of Eastern philosophies of skin and body care with exciting and innovative Western technology. All the In Beauty Med Spa health and wellness programs are medically supervised. A physician and dietitian are also available for client consultations. In Beauty Med Spa, inspire the nature of beauty. Visit InBeautySpa.com. Hey, Suzanne, it's the only machine that I need. I know, it's a great workout in just a fraction of the time. It made me get excited about workouts again. T-Zone Vibration is making people sit up and take notice. Employing the newest technology and fitness equipment, T-Zone Vibration gives you an hour workout in just 10 minutes. Try it. Believe it. You'll want to bring one home. T-Zone Vibration. Call 905-483-8676. T-Zone Vibration. 905-483-8676. Hey, Georgia. Hey, Suzanne. Welcome to Girls' Night Out. Did you remember the wine? Of course. After all, we're, we're the wine ladies. <laughs> we're in the kitchen. So what wine did you bring? Well, for our Girls' Night Out, we brought Girls' Night Out. I brought the Chardonnay. I brought the Merlot. Well, my guy bought me this. Too funny. The Rosé. Well, let the party begin. Girls' Night Out wines. Hugely popular VQA wines best enjoyed with friends. Available at the LCBO and other fine retail locations. For more information, go to girlsnightoutwines.com. In Beauty Med Spa is constantly researching the latest innovations from around the world and bringing them home to you. It's a wonderful meeting of Eastern philosophies of skin and body care with exciting and innovative Western technology. All the In Beauty Med Spa health and wellness programs are medically supervised. A physician and dietitian are also available for client consultations. In Beauty Med Spa, inspire the nature of beauty. Visit InBeautySpa.com. Hey, Suzanne, it's the only machine that I need. I know, it's a great workout in just a fraction of the time. It made me get excited about workouts again. T-Zone Vibration is making people sit up and take notice. Employing the newest technology and fitness equipment, T-Zone Vibration gives you an hour workout in just 10 minutes. Try it. Believe it. You'll want to bring one home. T-Zone Vibration. Call 905-483-8676. T-Zone Vibration. 905-483-8676. Hey, Georgia. Hey, Suzanne. Welcome to Girls' Night Out. Did you remember the wine? Of course. After all, we're, we're the wine ladies. <laughs> we're in the kitchen. So what wine did you bring? Well, for our Girls' Night Out, we brought Girls' Night Out. I brought the Chardonnay. I brought the Merlot. Well, my guy bought me this. Too funny. The Rosé. Well, let the party begin. Girls' Night Out wines. Hugely popular VQA wines best enjoyed with friends. Available at the LCBO and other fine retail locations. For more information, go to girlsnightoutwines.com. 
Imbeauty Med Spa is constantly researching the latest innovations from around the world and bringing them home to you. It's a wonderful meeting of Eastern philosophies of skin and body care with exciting and innovative Western technology. All the Inbeauty Med Spa health and wellness programs are medically supervised. A physician and dietitian are also available for client consultations. Inbeauty Med Spa, inspire the nature of beauty. Visit InBeautySpa.com. Hey, Suzanne, it's the only machine that I need. I know. It's a great workout in just a fraction of the time. It made me get excited about workouts again. T-Zone Vibration is making people sit up and take notice. Employing the newest technology and fitness equipment, T-Zone Vibration gives you an hour workout in just 10 minutes. Try it. Believe it. You'll want to bring one home. T-Zone Vibration. Call 905-483-8676. T-Zone Vibration. 905-483-8676. 